On one day we were filming like in a, a like like a creek, you know, lots of bushes, long grass, rocks, yeah. and that. So we had to have a little talk from a warden fellow first about the different types of snakes we might encounter. How to react if we come across one suitable clothing? Blah right, blah yeah. blah. Very interesting, actually, Andy. Yep. Um, the main thing it turned out was like just to be snake aware. You know, keep your eyes on the floor, for example, when you're walking. Yeah. Because the puff adder is really lies out in the sun and it's really well camouflaged. So if you see one, just walk slowly away. Right. Sounds plausible so far. The black mamba, most lethal snake in the world. Yeah. Now, interestingly, that has a very distinct smell, like burning rubber. Right. So take that as a warning, They're like burning rubber, if you smell that... Black mamba. Black mamba. That's a very interesting um, warning order, that, isn't it, Andy? Uh, burning rubber, don't you think? Is it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> the African spitting cobra, yeah? Be, mm. It'll raise its neck up. If you see it puff its neck out, you know like cobras yeah. do, yeah. that means it's about to spit. Put your goggles on. Because right. it'll spit at your eyes. Right. I um, need to retain this information, don't I? Oh, fuck yeah. Um, be particularly careful near bushes, right? The vine, or twig snake as it's called, exactly mimics the appearance of like, a small branch or a twig, yeah? yeah. Um, disturb it, bite. Yeah, it's actually, you know, Andy, it's actually the smallest of the, of the nasty snakes. It's really thin, uh -huh. about three foot long, yeah? But funnily enough, it is the most lethal on account of the fact that there is no antidote. Is this leading up to some comedy? Yeah, but I thought I'd fill you in on me day. OK, you know? yeah. Um, it hunts its food by smelling for dung. Ooh. The vine snake. Nasty, and there's no antidote, right? So we found the little piece. I'm dragging a cart with some beer barrels in it. Oh. And when I got to the right position, there's a bit of tape on the floor, you know, I glug the, some beer. That's right. the end of the shot. Do about 20 takes. So obviously, I'm desperate for a piss. And shit fist. No, I won't. No, I won't shit fist. I want you. I don't bit. think so. I don't bit. think so. The warden, I said, I need a piss. And the warden points me to a path through the bush and says to me, walk up the path about 100 yards. You'll see a little clearing that he's put a bucket in. He says, there's a green flag on the far edge of the clearing. And you must face that flag when you're peeing so the smell doesn't go so the smell goes away from the crew right you know um, and absolutely no shitting because that'll attract snakes yeah right so i woke up the path started me pissing in a button in the bucket facing the flag you know suddenly there's a tap on my shoulder and i feel a, a steel the knife against my throat that's not very nice is Cold it Andy? steel yeah um and then this i turn around and this fella says no, I don't turn around just yet. So and then I hear this fella say, turn around and don't make a fucking sound. So, I mean, Andy, what can I do? He's got a knife and he's specifically requested that I keep my mouth shut. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, pull your trousers down to your knees and insert your thumb into your anus. Well, I do, I would do as I'm told, Andy. I can't got say over, yeah. another got option. He says, now remove your thumb and rub the cack onto your Wilbur. So I did, right, to put my pants down and then uh, and rub some cack onto me and Johnson, you know, like... Yeah. Then he pulls out this long, thin plastic tube with a twig in it and he takes... the probe tube? Well, I'm, I have no idea at this time, Andy. And he takes the cap off <laughs> of one end and holds it right next to me Johnson, yeah? <laughs> Some would say Douglas. Some would say, well, the twig starts to move, <laughs> right? And I can see it's not a twig at all, it's a vine snake. Whoa. Now, you, now you're glad you knew the information from I've, earlier. I forgot the, the most snake deadly one. of all the Is snakes. Is that the one without the, the antidote? No antidote. Its head emerges and its tongue starts lapping the air, <laughs> like only a couple of inches from me dying. Mm. Yeah? Because, of course, it can smell the cack that he's made me rub on it. You know? He stitched you right up. Um, yeah. Presumably, he thinks that me dying is just like a little mouse or something, yeah. you know, that for his tea. Well, I'm thinking, this is it, Andy. This Finally, this is it. Yeah. So I just close my eyes, waiting for its fangs to sink in, in, you know, but nothing happens. And then I hear a sound, uh, hear the sound of what sounds like a man falling to the floor. So I slowly open the eyes, and sure enough, on the floor there in front of me, it's the bloke, and he's got a crossbow bolt in his chest. The snake's nowhere to be seen. Fuck. Then I hear the warden. You okay, Freddy? 
I said, yeah, but oh, I thought I was going to thank you so much. He says, yeah, it's a good job I'm a fucking pervert and was watching you piddle. I says, all oh, right, so that's why you told me to face the flag. Yeah, I've got a little hide there with binoculars and some nibbles. I fucking love it. Got a little what there? A little hide. Oh, hot, I thought you said hard. Yeah, so, so I said, well, thank God for your little hidey hole. So did this bloke want me dead then? Yeah, that's why he used a biney. That's kind of Australian, isn't it? Sit there for biney. That's why he used a biney. Fucking gangbangers, you couldn't love them. By the way, you tell anyone about my fucking secret and I'll rip your fucking guts out with this 1960s spanner. I said, oh, the secret's safe with me, mate. So... It's a bit, do you think that's a bit like the movie Platoon, you know? I think in The Warden's a bit yeah, like, you know. I kind of was. The bit where you said, what was it you said? Something like, I didn't think I was going to make it. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think. I thought that was I it. wasn't, I kind of thought you were going to make it because you're like, hey, now. <laughs> so there wasn't that much suspense at yeah, that but moment. I was, but apart I... from that, it was really good. Um, South Africa. And I remembered something that I uh, might want to tell you about my time in South Africa. OK. Do you want to hear it or do you want to just pack in there? Oh, you seem to have, you seem to have weirded in there with it already. So, so one of my days off filming, I thought, I'll go out for a bit of sun and a swim. So I went to the Blue Rock Water Park, mm -hmm. Andy. Big water park just outside on the outskirts of Cape Town. Caught a bus from just outside Rudy's General Store. Right. And he popped out to say hello as I was waiting, you know, with my trunks and my towel like... So Rudy says, All right, Bob? No, that's not it. That's Geordie. Is it? All right, Bob? You look terrible. You look a terrible weak bitch today. <laughs> Where are you heading to? <laughs> it's easier, isn't it? It's, it's kind of... Africa. It's, it's not he bad. He popped out to, to a soft... Where are you heading to? A soft play area for the feeble-bodied... <laughs> I said, no, Rudy, I'm going to Blue Rock Water Park. Do, do you know if it's any good? You bet, Blue. They got a hundred foot near vertical speed slide that will give you goose gogs, a right thud. Make sure you're well secure or they could end up looking like fried eggs. It's a terrible South African. Yeah, we'll do, Rudy. So, 20 minute bus ride, I'm there. Lovely hot day, lovely place. Put my stuff in a locker, change into my trunks, head straight for this big speed ride, this big 100 foot vertical drop that Rudy was on about. And there's not much of a queue, I reckon a lot of people didn't fancy it, and it's quite intimidating when you see it. Yeah. So, at the bottom of the stairs to the ride, you have to pick up this like padded PVC sleeve that you wear, like sort of like a skirt to soften the impact when you hit the bottom. Yeah. Um, so at the top, the last bit's this sort of ten foot ladder, and it's onto a platform. And there's a bloke there who tells you how to put the skirt on and releases you down the tube safely, right. you know. So I get on the platform, and shit, he's got a pointy stick, yeah, and he presses the the pointy stick against my face, yeah. He says, "Take your fucking babies off your prick and kneel like a dog." <laughs> well, what can I do, Andy? He's got a pointy stick. Right, and I'm on, like, on the sharp end of it, do you know what I mean? Still as you told. So I get down on all fours, and he says, Start feeding the penny... <laughs> Start feeding the penny PVC sleeve into your pooper, you prick, what I'll draw Yogi Bear on your nutsack. <laughs> well, I do as I'm starting, I start Got it, you? feeding the, uh, the sleeve in the in, 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 yeah, yes. in and he's uh, saying, Faster, fast, he's faster, faster! Once speed, yeah. fast. Well, Andy, I take, accuracy yeah, as well. Or just it, nearly just speed. Speed. So, Andy, I take a chance. I dive right past him and down the chute. Yeah. Yeah. Bang! I hit the bottom balls first, and they instantly <laughs> swell up like avocados. You know. And so I've got to get back to my locker to get my stuff, and I'm naked. Everyone's laughing at me because my balls are making a humming sound, a, a bit like a dehumidifier might make. Yeah. Or beehive. Right. You know, but yeah, but, it makes a noise, like bees. Yeah, but Sorry. many yeah. bees. Yeah. Anyway, back on the bus, I get off at Rudy's and go in to see if he's got any lotion or painkillers, you know, for me knackers. I tell him that the bloke made me feed the padded PVC protective safety skirt into me Terence, and he says, <laughs> Gangbangers, you got to fucking love them, bro. I said, well, no, I Rudy, would he really have made me put the whole unit up there? He <laughs> said... You bet, Blue. They fished a black out of the water last week with a bouncy castle turret up there and three kilos of play-down. 
Like I say, you got to fucking love them. Um, and then he advised me to wrap some streaky bacon ar around my plums and sleep uh -huh. upright that night facing the moon. Right. So did I you did do that? that. Did it help? I did that. I was right. <laughs> Right, it's rain the next morning, so cheers, Rudy. Can I just apologise for asking if, um, you know, if beehives make a noise during that? I know that they make the noise of bees, yeah. but I didn't know whether there was some kind of mechanical element to no, them I as well. No, I just meant that... Yeah, I just wanted to clear that up with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with fucking air, Wick! <laughs>